Well, students of dynamics, this is Dr. Dan Baker. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at particle kinetics, specifically power and efficiency. Now, we don't spend a lot of time on power and efficiency. It's actually just kind of one section. But it is worth mentioning, it's they're kind of an alternative to using a work and energy-based approach. It's actually related directly to work. So let's go ahead and define power. Okay, so power, we use the variable P is defined as the time rate of change of work. Okay, so given those words, probably not a surprise that P is equal to DW DT, time rate of change of work. Now, while we could definitely compute power in this way, it's not always accessible to have work, basically a, a time function of work, right? That recorded work over time isn't the easiest number to compute. And so what we can do is we can do a little substitution. And the substitution we're gonna do is related to this work term. So if I make a substitution, remember that work is a dot product of force and distance. So we can write here that work is equal to force dot dr. Now the reason it's dr instead of just r is because this is dw, right? It's an infinitesimally short amount of time over which we're doing work. And so this is going to be dt, right? Still a dt in the bottom. And then we can make one more substitution here and that's related to dr dt and of course we know that dr dt the time rate of change of the of the position is the velocity so the form of power that is a little bit easier to use is our force f we're going to dot that with our velocity v okay so if you find your instantaneous force and your instantaneous velocity if you dot those two, you end up with an instantaneous scalar value of the power at that moment. So if we think about the units for power in SI units, power is often expressed in joules per second, right? Which joules is our work term, which is equal to a Newton meter. And this joules per second is also equal to a watt. Okay, so a watt is a joules per second. And then in US customary units, not quite as tidy of units here. Certainly we could express it in foot pounds per second. Okay, so that would be our work per time. Or we can also use horsepower. Now notice I'm putting or as opposed to an equals. Because there is a conversion here and that is that one horsepower HP is equal to 550 foot pounds per second. Okay, so you can do that substitution just like you would you know, 12 inches to a foot, right? It's just a, just a substitution we can do for the units. So that's power. Next, looking at efficiency. And efficiency, we tend to use small letter E sub M. The M comes in because it's mechanical efficiency. There are other types of efficiency. So E sub M is defined as the ratio of work done by a machine to the work done on a machine. In a given time. So fundamentally, 
E sub m, our efficiency, is the power output divided by the power input. Now, probably not a huge surprise here. This is always less than 1. If you come up with the system, you end up with more power coming out than power going in. You're either going to be a billionaire or you made a math error. Okay? So that is the principles of efficiency and also power. So to demonstrate how we can use power and efficiency, let's go ahead and do an example here of a log. It's being pulled up a slope by a winch. Okay, so this log has a weight of 800 pounds and we're pulling it at a constant velocity. We do need free body diagrams. If you think about that, we're gonna sum forces. We need some free body diagrams in order to determine what those forces are. And so this is going to be uh, the tension the weight force, of course, pulling toward the center of the Earth. We will have a normal force, and also there would be a friction force. We'll draw that along the bottom edge here. There is a friction force because we're actually going to solve for that mu sub k. Okay, so we label this F sub k, as that will be a kinetic friction pulling it up this slope. And so to think about how we would work through this problem, a couple steps here. So for part A, Fundamentally, we could end up um, computing our acceleration, which turns out in this problem because the velocity is constant. Let me actually complete my free body diagram here with an axis system. So both in the x direction and also the y direction, the acceleration is equal to zero. So there really isn't a kinetic diagram. I guess we could go ahead and put the velocity here. V is equal to four as our one, and that's in feet per second as our one kinetic term. So really, the um, if we apply some Newtonian kinetics, it's going to look a lot like statics, right? Sum of forces equal zero. So let's go ahead and start there. Sum of forces, let's go ahead and start in the y direction, is equal to mass times a sub y. Again, here we know that a sub y is equal to zero. So on the left hand, summing those forces, we have our normal force. And then we're going to have the x component of the weight. So it's going to be minus 800. And that's going to be the cosine of 30. Again, where this is coming from is we are using a rotated coordinate system. My weight is here. If I know that this angle is 30, then also my normal force and the weight force there are going to be 30. So normal is going to be in the y direction. The weight force is going to be 30 degrees off of the y direction. Therefore, the y component is going to be cosine adjacent to that 30 degrees. Okay, so n minus 800 cosine 30. This is equal to 0. Therefore, we can find my normal force is equal to 692.82 pounds. Do the same thing for sum our forces in the x direction. Again, equal mass times a sub x. Now, you could have an a sub x if the motor was pulling hard enough to basically be speeding this log up, overcoming that kinetic friction. But what we have in this problem is just a balance of friction and that pulling force, so an acceleration equal to zero. So now we have the tension force, T, that's in the positive x direction, and then we're going to subtract off our friction force, that's 692.82 times our unknown mu sub k, and then additionally the weight component in that direction, so that's going to be 800, this time the sine of 30 degrees, and that is equal to zero. Okay, so we still have two unknowns. We don't know the tension, we also don't know mu sub k, so we're not out of the weeds yet. But if you think about the kind of information we have not used yet, we have not used any information about our six horsepower motor. Okay, so let's see if we can bring that in and solve some of that, some of the other remaining unknowns. And so we are going to use power and that gives me P is equal to F dot V. Okay, so we know our velocity. 
we know that our F fundamentally in this problem is our tension. Okay, the reason I know that is because this power equation is base is basically looking at this winch. Okay, so this winch has a certain tension that it's pulling, and it's pulling that tension at a given velocity. Okay, so there, that's how we can tell that's basically the power as related to the winch is related to the tension. So I'm going to write this here. There's my unknown tension and the velocity. Now, because they're parallel, the dot product basically gives me the sum, excuse me, the product of those two. So we can write here that P is equal to T times V. Once again, because the tension is parallel to the velocity pulling into that, rent, that winch. So we have a value for the power. We have a value for the velocity. We want to solve for that tension. So we can rearrange this, say that T is equal to the power divided by the velocity. Now the power is given six horsepower. And we can convert this into feet and pounds and seconds by our conversion factor, 550. So this is in foot pounds per second. And that's equal to one horsepower. Okay, so the horsepower cancels and we're left with a foot pound per second. And then we divide that by the velocity, constant value of four feet per second. So that leaves us, let's see the foot cancels, the second cancels, leaves us with the pounds, which is a good unit for attention. So attention is equal to 825 pounds. We then could put that back into our equation up here. So let me call this equation one. So we'll say into equation one, we can solve that our mu sub k is equal to 0 0.613, right? And there's not gonna be any units ever on a coefficient of kinetic friction. And then in the last part of the problem, part B, it says, what's the, if the power delivered to the motor is 3,740 foot-pounds per second, what is the efficiency? Okay, so you could think basically the 3,740 is equivalent to like the electricity that's going into that motor and how much power are we getting out is our overall mechanical efficiency. So mechanical efficiency is E sub M. And that's going to be the power output divided by the power input. And so again, the output we know we're getting six horsepower using the conversion factor here again, 550 foot pounds per second times one over horsepower, and then divide this by our input, 3,740. This is in foot pounds per second. Now all of these units are gonna cancel because efficiency is a unitless ratio. Okay, so pounds, pounds, seconds, seconds. So all of those units cancel, and we end up with EM equal to 0 0.882. Okay, like many percentages, this comes out as a number less than one, and so we could also say this is equal to 88.2% would be the efficiency of that electric motor. Okay, so we found mu sub k equal to 0.6 and mechanical efficiency equal to 88.2. So another way you can look at our power equation is it's really just an additional equation if you're given some information about power inputs, power outputs to a motor, uh, to an overall system, it gives you an additional equation to solve for unknowns. Thanks for your attention.